Hey you guys, welcome back to RPO Restorations. Doing a little work on the Cutlass today, getting it ready for the summer driving season. Figured now be a good time to shoot a quick video on how to properly set the timing on an Oldsmobile 307 cubic inch motor. I'm also gonna show you the three things that trip a lot of people up when they set the timing. They don't get the base timing right because of it and the car doesn't run right under certain conditions. So let's jump right in, get started, knock this out. Stay tuned. All right, so step one, we're gonna go ahead and remove the air cleaner. We're also gonna disconnect the vacuum line that runs to the thermostatic controller. Making sure to remove the hose from the air pump, the breather, and the intake. Next, we're gonna cap off the vacuum line that ran to our air cleaner. That brings us to the first thing that a lot of people forget to do. If you consult your emissions label or the service manual specifically says you need to disconnect the EGR valve, cap that line off as well. We do this so that the engine computer doesn't do anything to interfere with the way the motor runs when we set the base timing. All right, step two, you wanna disconnect the canister purge hose that goes from your charcoal canister over to your carburetor and plug that up. We also do this so that we're not sucking in vapors affecting the way the motor runs while we're setting the timing. Okay, so those are two of the three things that people forget. Number three will be coming in a moment. But now, step three, we're gonna stage our distributor wrench over on top of our distributor clamp bolt. Now, the timing is meant to be set with the engine fully warmed up. So you don't wanna be feeling around trying to find a blind bolt while the engine's hot. That's why we get it set up beforehand this way, once we're all warmed up, we're ready to go. Now be a good time to set up our timing light. With the inductive pickup pick up over the ignition wire for the number one cylinder. Right here. Make sure it's on there properly. And put the other two wires up to our battery. All right, now for step five, we're going to start the car, let it get up to normal operating temperature. All right, now that we got the motor up to normal operating temperature, next step is to increase the idle to about a thousand RPM to make it easier to see the timing marks and the light as they flash, to set the timing correctly. Alright guys, back inside the car for the last step before we actually set our timing. And now remember we capped off the EGR valve and that charcoal canister that ran to the carburetor. We do this because we want to take the engine computer out of the equation when it comes to how this motor is running when we set our base timing. And the last and final step to do that is to put the engine or the computer in what's called field service mode. Do this by taking our paper clip or a piece of wire and grounding the diagnostic terminal on our ALDL connector inside the car. You'll know you're in field service mode and I'll put a uh, diagram up on the screen right now to show you exactly where you put your paper clip or your wire. You'll know you're in field service mode when the check engine light starts to flash sporadically as the motor's running. So let's go ahead and do that now. And while I do it, this would be a good time to ask you to hit that like button if you like the video and also hit that subscribe button if you are into 80s cars and keeping them on the road. All right, let's go. All right, we got our car in field service mode. Go ahead and see where our base timing is. Looks like we're a little bit off. Loosen our distributor clamp bolt.
There we go. Yeah, good to go. Tighten down that distributor clamp bolt. Pull that paper clip out, take the motor out of field service mode before you shut it off. And that's it, we're done. All right guys, so that's it. Now all we have to do is turn our idle back down, uncap and reattach all those lines that we removed, put our air cleaner back on, and the job is done. When we did it, we took the engine computer totally out of the equation. This way it didn't mess with the timing at all or change the way that the motor ran. Now we've got our base timing set at 20 degrees, right where it should be. This way, when the engine computer makes adjustments as we're driving, it has an idea of where we're coming from and where it needs to be. Hope you found this video helpful. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for tuning in.